Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today is Warcraft Monday, and today I'm going to be reacting to a Platinum WoW video called Zildjian Did Nothing Wrong Armani Tribe Law. Um, I've just watched Rise and Embarrassing Fall of Trolls in Warcraft by uh, Platinum WoW. If you want to check that out and other uh, Warcraft Monday videos, remember the playlist card will be at the top. Just click on it and be able to access them. Okay, let's start. Three, two, one, go. In my last video, I said that the next video would be about every troll tribe and their unfortunate fate. But when doing research, I came to the conclusion that the Imani and their leader Zuljin needed their own video. Imani history is filled with brutal wars, crushing defeats, and valiant attempts at defending their own lands. All throughout Amani history, they have tried to preserve their home from knife-eared, prissy little elves and their allies. Zul'jin himself embodies the trolls' fanatical vengeance for the elves, a vengeance that was completely justifiable. The forests of Lordaeron are Amani lands. Other races are just living in it. And considering how old the trolls are, um, all the way back to the time when Azeroth was uh, still one supercontinent, I agree. You know, I mean, every all pieces of land that uh, everybody else treads on, it belongs to the trolls. Yeah. After the Sundering, the Omani trolls found themselves in the forest that would eventually be called Northern Lordaeron. The trolls lived relatively peaceful lives, not having any real competition with other races until... Oh no, not again. After the War of the Ancients, the war that made the whole world explode, the de facto leaders of the Calderai, Malfurion, and Tyrande realized that having a society built on abusing arcane magic was extremely volatile, and any elf caught using it would be banished. Dathramar Sunstrider, a highborn who felt like it was the elves' birthright to use such magic, left with the rest of his snobby highborn friends with a vial of pure energy from the Well of Eternity. Over time, these elves would become shorter, have paler skin, have blue eyes, and eventually turn into the High Elves. The elves sailed across Azeroth and landed in an area that would be known as Lordaeron. The Amani's PTSD instantly kicked in. They knew the destruction elves brought with them, and without question, the Amani instantly launched ruthless skirmishes to squash the elves, but their sophisticated magic always seemed to put them on top. These skirmishes fostered an intense hostility between the races that would continue for the next thousands of years. Eventually, the elves established themselves in the lands of Quel'Thalas and built Silvermoon City, right on top of the ancient troll ruins the Amani held sacred, which only strengthened the animosity between the two races. And you, I, I, you know, I just watched um, a video last week from Noble eighty seven. He was discussing about uh, um, the Blood Elves and Lothamar Theron, and he was he was discussing the the Elven side of history in terms of you know them having their their fights and their uh, disagreements with the trolls uh, and now here i'm with platinum wow he's discussing on the troll side of things you know how they have been disenfranchised how their land has been taken from them and you know how the elves built their capital city on top of uh, troll land so yeah it's quite interesting the elves also created the Sunwell, a pool of infinite magical arcane and light power that they could feed off of. But the elves, they learned their lesson from last time. The last font of limitless power attracted the Burning Legion that ultimately destroyed their society. So, the High Elves of Quothalos set up rune stones around their city that... Y you know what? Let me just have an elf explain what these stones do. I bought a whole bunch of Shungite rocks. Do you know what Shungite is? No, not Suge Knight. I think he's locked up in prison. Talking Shungite. It's a two billion year old like rock that protects against frequencies and unwanted frequencies that may be traveling in the air. That's my story. I bought a whole bunch of stuff, put them around the La Casa, little pyramids. Not only did these stones shroud the use of the High Elves magic, but it also weakened the Amani witch doctors in their vicinity. 
The superstitious trolls were frightened by these unusually powerful stones and remained in the forests of Lordaeron preferring to attack the High Elven convoys rather than launch a full-scale war. Yeah! Though Mani continued to remain a thorn in the Elves' side for the next thousands of years, never letting them forget who claimed these lands in the first place. The tenacity of the Amani caught the attention of one of their old allies. The Zandalari saw potential in the Forest Trolls. Their bloodlust and willingness to wage war against the enemies of the trolls would be exactly what they need if they ever wanted to become the once great empire they used to be. Although the Amani had persistence, they lacked significant leadership and magical empowerment. A savage troll by the name of Jintha was named the warlord of the Amani, and almost instantly warbands were pushed forward towards the kingdom of Quothalas and empowered by the Loa gods they worshipped. The High Elves quickly realized that they were in big trouble and needed to find their own aid in return. At this point, Anastarian Sunstrider, son of Dathomar Sunstrider, was the leader of Quothalas and traveled down to the human kingdom of Erethor. It was obvious that once the trolls were done sieging the Elves, they'd bring their rampage to the humans. So in exchange for the humans' aid, Sunstrider promised to train exactly 100 humans in the ways of magic. King Thoradin agreed, and at first the humans were quite clumsy learning this new power, but... Oh my god, my kitty, no! It was clear they had a natural affinity for it. The mages remained in the human capital of Strom, while 2,000 soldiers pushed into the Amani lands to coax them into their trap. Little did Jintha know, he was playing right into it. The berserk controls turned on a dime and pushed the humans all the way back to the Alterac Mountains, while the elves of Quothalos followed closely behind and nipped at their heels. The humans stopped their retreat at the base of the Alterac Mountains, fortifying in preparation to launch their secret weapon. The Amani thought victory was in their grasp, but little did they know, they were already dead. In an unprecedented event never seen before, hundreds of mages used their combined might to rain down a firestorm, burning Troll and Loa alike in a roaring blaze that ended the Troll Wars in a matter of seconds. Thousands upon thousands of Amani lost their lives that day. The Trolls that survived the Inferno quickly broke ranks and were hunted like game in the forests. The forests that they lived in first. The forests they called home thousands of years before any elf or human even existed. The Amani's bitter hatred for the outside world grew ten times that day, and it would take another two thousand years for them to retaliate once again. Over the next thousands of years, the Elves' influence continued to expand. The Amani continued playing the role of the Boogeyman in the forests, but a new leader that rose to power reinvigorated the tenacity of the tribe once again. His name was Zul Jin. This warlord's raids on Elven villages became infamous. The Amani raiding parties would zerg through elven villages, destroying everything in their path before they could even retaliate. These battles were decisive victories for the Amani, but it was no way to win a war. Zul'jin believed the annihilation of the elves centered around the destruction of the Sunwell. In order to destroy the Sunwell, he'd need to figure out how these runestones around their city worked. There was only one way to get this information. Good old fashioned interrogation. Zul'jin captured Lorthamar, Lady Leadrin, and two other elves whose names are not important, and put them in a torture chamber and filled it with hallucinogenic smoke to blur their sense of reality. The Amani Empire be back now. Seek vengeance, and we gonna start with you. The warlord of the Amani preached how these were troll lands, wrongfully stolen by the elves, and that they were the real villains. He talked about how the Amani never truly die, and they would never stop 
and their endless need for revenge. To extract the information from Lorthamar, Zul'jin stabbed the elf in the stomach, drawing the blade upwards and then smearing his own face with the elf's blood. Brutal. The torture continued until Liadrin freed herself and used her priestly magic to inflict the same pain she went through during the torture back to Zul'jin. Oof, owie, my bones, man. And then they teleported away. Although Zul'jin relished in the pain he brought on the elves, he did not get the information he needed. But thankfully, sometime later, he'd find a surprising new ally. In the south of the Eastern Kingdoms, a new faction called the Horde rampaged across the lands. This new orcish threat was a force to be reckoned with, and although they had not been on Azeroth for long, they fostered the same hatred the Amani had for the elves and humans alike. Zul'jin was captured by humans and placed in an internment camp, but was freed by Orgrim Doomhammer, the war chief of the Horde at the time. The two sparked an alliance, but for Zul'jin's aid, he had one condition. The only way the Amani would join the Horde is if the High Elves were annihilated. Zul'jin's fanatical need for vengeance would never be quenched until he bathed in elven blood, and he held King Anastarian's head in his hands and forced him to watch his city be scorched in flame, just like how his defenseless brothers burned in the Troll Wars all those years ago. You know, when one war ends, another one begins. You know, war doesn't necessarily end, it just creates new wars and new pain and new suffering, which in turn creates more wars and more pain and more suffering. So I just don't know how were they how are they going to be able to to end this cycle, you know? Um because right now we're in Shadowlands. I, I I don't think we're going to be discussing anything about Azeroth and the history of Azeroth and you know the political affiliations of either the Trolls or the High Elves or anyone else now. Um, now that we're dealing with the afterlife in Shadowlands, I don't think we're going to be discussing about that stuff anymore. But really, these kind of situations that have generational uh, animosities, it I don't know how they're going to stop uh fighting each other um but i know that the 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 blood elves are part of the horde so it must be very awkward you know because the trolls are also part of the horde so now you're seeing your mortal enemy siding with your ally it, it must be very weird for the for the trolls and for the high uh for the blood elves truly it must be very weird well uh uh, dude, chill out. While well, the Horde's plan was to originally just attack the capital of Lordaeron, the Yamani seemed like a very powerful ally they could not ignore, so they helped Zul'jin in his struggle against the High Elves. Zul'jin guided the Horde forces up north through the Eastern Kingdom, my boy Gul'dan! <laughs> ...rallied his Amani warbands and quickly started their conquest on Quel'Thalas. Gul'dan and his warlocks studied the magic behind the runestones that protected the city and severely weakened their power which greatly helped the Horde in the battle. You guys make me sick! Make me sick! It's pathetic game design thinking and balance! Huh? The High Elves in turn called upon the aid of the Alliance and the war raged on at the gates of Quothalas, until the Cunning Elves harnessed the power of the Sunwell to unleash a spell not seen since the Great Sundering, and that is the Plot Armor Barrier. The Plot Armor Barrier created an impenetrable shield that stopped the Horde from advancing at all. It was at this point Gul'dan kind of just disappeared to go on his own quest for selfish power and Orgrim decided that they were wasting their time. At the end of the day, the orc's main mission was to destroy the capital, Lordaeron. This was just a side mission. And despite Zul'jin's protests, the orcs left and did just that, and the Amani were left to their own devices once again. This was the closest the Amani ever got to victory, so they continued to fight on despite lacking in numbers. That, that sounds like a very poor choice 
of a decision to make because you know if they had joined the orcs in attacking Lordaeron and they defeated the humans uh, the most important kingdom in the eastern kingdoms if they had defeated Lordaeron and crushed them uh, the the high elves of Quel'Thalas would not have any more allies to call upon the alliance would be shattered you know, and then they would just have to figure out a way to break through this plot armor barrier that protects Quathalas, and then they can attack um, uh, the High Elves. So, you know, if you're in an alliance with someone, don't don't try and be in an alliance simply and ultimately for convenience sake. You know, also help out your partners when they are dealing with their own uh, objectives. They tried it with your side. The trolls, they tried it with your side, you know, defeating the High Elves. They didn't, it didn't work out properly. So now retreat uh, and join up with the Orcs to defeat Lordaeron. Once that's complete, then you ha you'll have, in, you know, enough time to go back up north and attack Kothalas. They should have done that. They should have done that. But, you know, revenge clouded uh, Zojin's judgment and clouded almost all the trolls' judgments, you know, um... And they just wanted this so bad. They wanted this so bad. But... Their bloodlust clearly blurred their judgment. And the elves used this to their advantage to try and destroy the trolls once and for all. History seemed to repeat itself as the elves haphazardly burned the forests, rounding up as many trolls as they could and killed them in the hundreds. Zul'jin himself was cornered at Lake Daromir, where he was captured and chained to a stone where he endured an endless torrent of pain. To the elves, Zul'jin was a monster, a beast that lurked in the woods that massacred their friends and family. But Zul'jin was no monster. <laughs> In order to escape, Zul'jin had to pay the ultimate price, cut off his own arm, and escaped into the forest. Before we continue our story, let's get out our notebooks because we're going to learn about some troll physiology, and a lesson in blizzard writing. In lore, trolls have the ability to regenerate body parts. There are stories of dedicated troll war drummers flaying themselves alive to use their skin for their drums and then regenerating it back. Vol Jin got stabbed in the throat and lived, and there are even stories of trolls being totally disemboweled and living. Zul Jin, on the other hand, did not regenerate his eye or his arm. Why is that? Uh, we don't really know for sure. We know that if trolls' body parts are cauterized, it doesn't grow back, but that never happened to him. I and some others like to think that the reason he never grew his arm or his eye back is by choice, to give his warbands a symbol of hatred for the elves. A physical representation of what they took from the trolls. Does that make practical sense to command an army with one eye and one arm? No. But is it badass? Hell yeah. So let's continue. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, I didn't know that the trolls had uh, very powerful regenerative abilities. That's that's unique. Um, because, you know, the elves have immortality. Uh, the trolls have regeneration. The I don't know what do the dwarves have and the humans. I'm not sure what kind of power they have. Also the orcs. I'm not sure. And Pandarians. Yes. Who else? Gnomes? Goblins? What do they have? Or what kind of special power do they have? Hmm, interesting. One fateful morning, Zul'jin woke up to see one of the most beautiful sights imaginable. Truly, this was one of the most poggers moments in Amani history, and they weren't even involved. Apparently, one of the High Elves' own people betrayed them, disabled the plot armor barrier, and Arthas and his Scourge armies sieged the Elves to use the Sunwell to resurrect Kel'Thuzad. 
Um, that's a long story for another time that we can talk about later. Yeah, I watched that story from Noble87. So now let's continue with um, Platinum Wow. Zuljin did nothing wrong. The point is, 90% of the elves died that day. Let me say that again. 90%. Oh, yeah, that is good. This was the Amani's time to strike. Boats set sail to the Isle of Queldenos to claim the Sunwell in the name of the trolls. And then it was blown up, killing all the trolls. And uh, that combined with the devastating defeat the Amani had in the Second War beforehand kind of stopped them from really doing anything to capitalize on this devastating defeat that the elves went through. After this event, the elves were renamed into the Blood Elves. They used fell energies to help reconstruct Silvermoon after their devastating loss, and that fell radiation made them have green eyes. In the forests, Zul'jin paced back and forth in frustration. The Imani needed something, anything, to muster the strength to squash these elves once and for all in their weakened state. In comes Hexlord Malacross, a witch doctor who offered Zul'jin aid in the form of a quote-unquote dark power. We never exactly find out what this dark power is. Perhaps it's demonic? Maybe it's the Cathraxi General Kithix that the Imani killed way back on Primordial Azeroth? But you know what I think it is though? It's Blizzard propaganda. That's right, Blizzard propaganda to make the Imani seem like the bad guys when truly they're just trying to defend their own lands. The Imani adopted this quote-unquote dark power and grew until the events of TBC when the Zulman raid was open to players. This was also another big bruh moment because this is when the Blood Elves joined the Horde. You know, the only outsiders they ever allied with in their existence. Another strong reason to hate everybody around them. And I think we know where this story ends. Players charge in the Zul Man, kill every troll in sight, and Zul'jin's valiant attempt to restore pride back in the Amani is ended. Maybe me fall, but the Amani Empire never gonna die. But in Cataclysm, the Amani are back with a new random leader they pulled out of their ass, and then a- Oh, oh okay, well, they die again. And then in Mist of Pandaria, they help the Zandalari in the Throne of Thunder, and, the, and then they're defeated again. And then in Battle for Azeroth, oh my god, you think the elves are the biggest losers? Yeah, right, look, to, to be honest, we, we all know, we all know what we're thinking here. The elves were asking for it. Whoa, whoa, why are you booing me? I'm right, I'm right. No, 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 no. You want to know what the empire of the Amani has become? An alleyway. And get this, the Zandalari, the spiritual leaders who are the epicenter of troll culture, join the horde. Thus being allies with the Blood Elves, and the only way for the Amani to survive now is to be total servants to them. And you know what the Zandalari let the Horde do? Just beat the shit out of them whenever they want. There is literally a world quest where you just roll into the Imani alleyway, beat the crap out of their disciples of the Loa, and then leave. The story of the Imani is just- Oh, that's so sad. That's just so sad. Um, probably they thought going back to Zandalar they would, you know, be amongst their people and they would be happy, uh, they would be true trolls although they've been losing so much uh in in, in lordaeron in the forest of lordaeron and fighting against the high elves who turned into the blood elves you know they thought maybe going home uh to zandala would be something good for them but here they are they've been reduced in population size and 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 as a people down to an alleyway that's it that's all they have left from that tribe that existed during the times of uh, the primordial Azeroth uh, to the Sundering and, and now uh, their own defeat to the Elves, now they've just reduced to this. This is all that's left of them. It's very, very sad. And to add insult to injury, yes, the Zandalari have joined uh, the, 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 the Horde. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's terrible. It's very, very terrible for them.
one of many troll downfalls because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight other troll dungeons and raids all throughout Warcraft's history where you, as the player, kill them all. Look at you, you monster. Look, look, you made Zul'jin cry. How do you sleep at night? Nobody did and me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't do this often, but follow me on Twitter. You can get exclusive content like this. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, uh, bye. Ah, uh, poor guy. Yeah, no, Zildjian did nothing wrong, guys. He did nothing wrong. Uh, the Amani tribe did nothing wrong. They just existed, and that that was their downfall, because they just existed. And they lived in lands that were now being claimed by either high elves or by humans. And really, they just suffered. They suffered. And also, revenge clouded their judgment. It filled them with such... Um, pain and suffering that you know they just could not see beyond their ambitions to destroy the very enemies that they've been fighting against for generations you know they they could have solidified their alliance with the horde and uh, helped the orcs destroy Lordaeron completely uh, destroy all the eastern kingdoms and then once that once that had been completed then they would move you know up uh, up the continent all the way up to Quel'Thalas. Uh, you know they could have done that but it just it just didn't happen um, they had their own missions and ambitions you know to destroy the high elves no matter the cost even if their allies were no longer there to assist them so yeah it's 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 quite sad really what happened to the trolls as a whole uh, during the times of the primordial Azeroth and after this after the sundering uh, how the elves uh, not the elves but the trolls were separated across Azeroth and you know the Amani tribe really I think they had the worst of it they really had the worst of it compared to the other tribes that uh, existed uh, across Azeroth they really had it bad uh, since day one I would say you know um, especially with the high with the high elves you know their their tactics you know destroying forests just to get just to corner their enemy in one spot so that they could just kill them all I mean wow it's just terrible really it's just terrible and then also them their own downfall uh, led by the undead um, by the scourge and by King Arthur's you know, you you would expect these people to learn from this kind of pain and suffering. You know, both sides, either you, whether you're troll or you're high elf or your blood elf. I mean, you know, I, you would expect these guys to learn from 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 those painful events. That you know, war doesn't is not the answer to anything. War is not going to help you here. You know, we need to find a compromise. We need to find a settlement. But none of that happened. It did. They just continued on with their skirmishes and their fights and uh, really it's it's bad what happened with the Amani tribe and now they're under the thump of the Zandala uh, the Zandalari and the Zandalari have also joined forces with the Horde you know it, it must be very weird and very painful to be seeing your own people you know, trolls now working with your worst enemies. Those that killed so many of your people and destroyed your civilization. Uh, so yeah, it's it's quite sad, really. And like the title says, Zul'jin did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. He really just didn't do anything wrong. He just wanted what was theirs from the very beginning. It was theirs so long ago. 
all of it it belonged to them but like i said before empires rise and empires fall um and those that fall you know it takes time for people to adjust to that new reality that they are no longer on top so yeah okay guys um that's it that's it for today uh, if you want to check out Rise and Embarrassing Fall of Trolls in Warcraft, made by Platinum WoW, remember the, the card will be somewhere at the top here to see it. Um, and if you want to watch other Warcraft Monday videos, remember it will be on that same playlist. Yeah, the playlist will be here somewhere. Somewhere at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you like the video, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I will see you next time with another installment on Warcraft Monday. Okay? Bye-bye.